Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Satria Kusuma. I work with the Student Recruitment Office uh, uh, at the St. John's campus, and I will be the moderator for this session. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for the Grantville campus session. If you have entered the wrong room and uh, would like to hop out to attend another session, uh, that is completely fine. You can leave this breakout room and enter the correct room by clicking on the appropriate session. I believe there are concurrent sessions happening uh, uh, at the, for the Marine Institute campus and also the Labrador campus. So if you are attending those sessions, feel free to um, uh, to click on those sessions. And uh, just to let you know, uh, I will be um, um, letting people in uh, for uh, for the room and. I would like to begin uh, the session by introducing uh, my colleague from the Grantville campus who are here to answer all your questions about the undergraduate programs. Uh, and as I introduce you, April, please tell us your uh, position within the Grantville campus and a little bit about your role. Perfect, thank you, Satria. Hello, everyone, good evening. Uh, my name is April Crocker and I am the manager of student recruitment at the Grantville campus. I've been at Grenfell now for about 13 years, so looking forward to um, sharing a presentation with you tonight and giving you, uh, allowing you to have, ask any questions that you may have. Uh, thank you, April. And before I hand this over uh, to April uh, to get started, I just want to have a, a few, a couple of housekeeping items to mention. Uh, first, your mics are muted and your video uh, is turned off. So you're only going to be able to see our panelists with us today, uh, and you're certainly not alone. This is just to help easily facilitate the session. But if you do have any questions uh, or and use the Q&A uh, function uh, to all panelists within the WebEx platform, uh, that's the, the main reason that we are here. We really want to get all the uh, questions you have taken care of. Uh, secondly, today's focus is on Grantful Campus. So try to keep uh, our questions uh, related to this topic. Third, uh, if you do have any questions, we don't uh, uh, don't you know we don't get to to it. Don't worry, we'll send out uh, a direct message in the chat or can contact you after the event to provide uh, a more detailed answer. And without further ado, I'm gonna leave. Uh, I'm gonna give the the floor to you there, April. Perfect. Thank you again. Um, so good evening, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so my name is April and I'm the manager of student recruitment at Grenfell. So um, my plan for this evening is to give a short presentation about who Grenfell is, what we offer, some of the services we provide, and then uh, feel free to ask any questions towards the end and I'd be happy to answer them. So you can just change the slide there, please. So Grenville campus is located in Cornerbrook, Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, so for those of you who may or may not be familiar with the province, uh, we are located on the West Coast. We're about 700 kilometers from the St. John's campus. So we often get students asking, hey, can I take courses in St. John's and Grenville? Well, no, not unless you want to travel eight hours each way per day. It's not really an option. Um, a lot of the programs that Gren, uh, that the St. John's campus offers can be started at Grenfell, um, so that is an option as well. Cornerbrook is a relatively smaller city, um, so we only have about 25,000 people. With that being said, um, Cornerbrook is located in, it's the hub of the western region, so it's there's a big hospital here, um, there's movie theaters, there's your big box store, there's a shopping mall, lots of restaurants. Um, Cornerbrook is also known for its outdoor sort of lifestyle. So we have Marble Mountain, which is a world-class ski resort about 10 uh, minutes from campus. We're only a short drive, about an hour away from uh, Grossmore National Park. So people who love the outdoors, love to hike, um, kayak, sightsee, all of those things. Um, is this is a great location? Um, and we're also really known for our arts and entertainment. So Grenville is home of um, 
the School of Fine Arts. So there's a lot of local talent within the community, a lot of artists, a lot of musicians, um, lots of different plays that are constantly being played throughout the year. So it really, like I said, it's a smaller city, but it really do offer most of which you would find in a larger city. And uh, it's also important to notice that Cornerbrook is a very safe city as well. Um, I've, I came from a rural community, not very many people. There were seven people in my graduating class. Um, so when I moved to Cornerbrook, I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be huge, but uh, it's not. You can change it now. So Grenfell campus is located up on the hill in Cornerbrook. Um, we are a smaller campus of Memorial University. So our total population is only about 1400 students. Um, so as you can imagine with 1400 students, um, you do generally get small class sizes um, at Grenfell. So in your first year, your average class size is about 30 students. Of course, there are some courses like business or psychology where you may have a little more than that, but our largest classroom only holds 90 students. Um, so that would likely be an entry level psych class, for example. Um, you can switch there. So I will talk to you a little bit about programs in a couple minutes. Um, so starting up, we have our School of Arts and Social Sciences. So within this school, we offer programs in business administration, English, history, um, humanities, psychology, and social cultural studies. So our business is a four year Bachelor of Business Administration. Um, we don't offer the opportunity to specialize or major in an area you'll take courses in a lot of different areas so you'll take courses in accounting marketing human resources ethics all those sorts of things um, to get a really well-rounded degree english history the humanities they sort of speak for themselves um, psychology is one of our bigger programs um, and we offer that through a bachelor of arts and a bachelor of science um, so you have two options there. Social cultural studies is a little bit of a unique program, I would say. Um, so this program allows you the opportunity to study um, sociology, anthropology, and folklore. So it's almost like you're taking a triple sort of minor program. Um, of course, it's not technically called that, but th those are the focus areas within that degree. And uh, our School of Arts and Social Science is home to about 50% of our student population. So it is our largest school and we have um, most of our students studying within, within that school. And switch there. So uh, our School of Fine Arts, so this is one of Memorial's uh, unique programs. So you can't complete um, these programs on the St. John's campus. So we offer theater, both acting and technical theater, and we offer visual arts. Um, so within theater, both of these programs are competitive. Um, they do have different admission deadlines of so February 1st. This can be done virtually, though, so you wouldn't have to travel to campus. Um, and then we offer technical theater. And this one deals with everything that you need behind the scenes to get that play up for production. Um, so they'll look at lighting, set building, um, some directing, maybe some costume design. So all of those behind the things um, behind the scene things that bring a play to life. Visual arts. Um, so this one is very interdisciplinary. So you'll take courses in a lot of different areas. You'll do some photography, you'll do some um, painting, sculpting, uh, a little, little bit of graphic design, um, printmaking. So um, it really encompasses all the different areas within the arts. For this program, you do need to submit a portfolio. Um, and students often get a little bit nervous when they hear that um, they aren't looking to see that 
you're the next Picasso, for example. Um, they want to see that you can demonstrate creativity, originality, because um, that's what you're going to come and study with us for um, to build on those skills. And they like to see uh, unique works of art. This school is also unique in that um, our theater students is actually mandatory for all students um, before they graduate to visit our campus in Harlow, the, U the UK, um, to study for a semester. So Harlow is located about 45 minutes by train outside of London. Um, and really when you're in the UK, all of Europe is sort of at your fingertips. You can easily travel between the different countries. Um, so it's a really, really great experience. You'll be back and forth to London. I believe you have to watch a minimum of 20 plays while you're there. And then our students are off to Italy for the weekend or off to France or Switzerland. So it's, uh, it's pretty neat. Um, visual arts students, it's not mandatory for them to visit our Harlow campus, but um, it's an option and like, most people do 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 choose to do that because it is such a great opportunity. Go ahead now. So, and next we have our School of Science and the Environment. So we do have a couple of unique programs within this school as well. So we do offer environmental science, uh, and then you can choose to specialize in either a biology or a chemistry stream. And our biology, well, they're both very hands on, but our biology um, majors, they really get out into the out into the environment. Um, they're doing research, they're taking samples and the, those sorts of things. And then our chemistry students are very much um, in the lab doing that chemistry work. Next, you'll see environment and sustainability. So we often get asked, what's the difference between environmental science and environment and sustainability? Well, environmental science is a bachelor of science degree. Um, and then and they, it's really science heavy, science focused with the bio, biology and the chemistries. And then environment and sustainability is more the social sciences of environment and sustainability. So some of the courses you would take would be like environmental ethics, environmental politics, environmental policy. So often studying what human factors, um, what are humans doing that could be putting our environment um, at risk and ways that we can help mitigate that. General science is another unique program. So this program allows you to choose three of five sciences to study. So you can choose from math, biology, chemistry, physics, and earth sciences. So you choose three of those, study them for four years. Oftentimes, a lot of our graduates from this program uh, will go on to do like education, med school, those sorts of things. We offer a math degree, and then we also offer a joint math and physics degree. So in the four years, you can graduate with the two majors. And then we also offer physics. Um, what's pretty cool about our physics program is uh, we do have a very large telescope. And within that program, you can take a number of courses in astronomy, and you'll actually get to use the telescope on a regular basis, which is pretty cool. There are some other universities in um, in Canada that have similar similar sorts of equipment, um, but it's often used for research. So um, our students don't get our undergraduate students don't get that opportunity, which is great. You can go ahead and switch. And then we also offer uh, nursing through the Western Regional School of Nursing. Um, so we offer nursing in a few different uh, places across Newfoundland and Labrador. So we have two locations in St. John's, one in Gander, Grand Falls, Corner Brook, and then one in Happy Valley Goose Bay. What happens when you're applying to nursing is you have to choose, you have to rank where you want to study first. So if it's if it's here in Corner Brook, um, you would rank Western Regional School of Nursing as number one, and then uh, rank whichever order um, you would like after that. It's the same nursing program uh, located at all sites across the province. 
um, uh, but there is a few different um, admission requirements. So we require that uh, students have to submit their application by January 20th. So that's very, very important. We do not accept any late applications uh, for nursing. And we also require you have completed grade 11 and 12 biology and grade 12 chemistry. So just keep that in mind. If you may be in grade 10 or 11 and thinking about nursing down the road, you cannot get into nursing without those uh, prerequisite courses. If by some chance you don't have them, that is okay as well. You just won't be able to get direct admission into nursing. So you can come study with us for a semester um, or for the year and take the necessary biology and chemistry courses. You can also take um, some other non-nursing elective courses like your psychology, your English, those sorts of things. These are courses that you'll need for the degree and then you could reapply to the School of Nursing for the following year. Nursing is quite competitive, um, so we don't offer, we do offer quite a number of seats, um, but it is very competitive. So don't get discouraged if you happen to apply and don't get in your first time. Go ahead. So now that we got all the academic sort of stuff out of the way, um, there's lots of fun things to do as well. Um, so uh, we have an Indigenous and international caucuses that um, plan events all throughout the year. So we're actually planning an international night for um, November 17th, where um, we'll, we have students studying from 50 different countries around the world. So there is, <clears throat> sorry. So there is uh, a lot of diversity on campus. So we host these international nights to allow you to get out and sort of meet some international students, taste their food from their home country, see sort of traditional clothing or maybe traditional dances, all those sorts of things. It's a fun community event um, that always brings a very large crowd. We have a number of clubs and societies as well. Um, so we, I mentioned our environmental programs a little earlier, so we are really focused on uh, the environment and sustainability. So we have an environmental action committee that uh, looks to make the campus a more sustainable um, place um, to, and they'll do different cleanups and stuff throughout the year. Um, Grenville also has about 25% of our students identify as Indigenous, so there is a strong Indigenous population on campus. So we have a number of Indigenous uh, supports in place. Um, two full-time staff members dedicated to supporting Indigenous students. Um, campus is also home um, to a designated smudging area. So, <clears throat> sorry, I have to, <coughs> I have a little tickle in my throat, I apologize. Um, so, yeah, I was saying uh, we do have a designated smudging area on student on campus to support those students. Um, there's an indigenous sort of hangout space, which is pretty cool. Um, and every year we host an all nations powwow in September that brings people from all over Newfoundland. Um, so we have a teepee on campus. Um, like I said, just lots of uh, those supports in place. And uh, I mentioned a little earlier, um, we're located in such a great environment, so you can really get outdoors. Um, we generally have really good weather. We do get um, quite a bit of snow, but we sort of embrace that as well. Um, so we'll go skiing or snowshoeing or skating, those sorts of activities. Um, and Grenville is home um, to, <clears throat> sorry, uh, sorry, you can change that slide. So we also have a number of services in place to support you. So our Grenfell Warriors is our sports team. So we have uh, volleyball and basketball teams. We're working on getting a badminton and soccer team up and running. Next year, so for fall 2024, we'll be opening our brand new Western uh, Aquatic Center. So this will be a brand new facility to the city of Cornerbrook located right on Grenfell campus. There'll be a large pool, a water slide, um, a lazy river, 
um, a gymnasium, a fitness area, um, and it'll also be home to a daycare. So for students who may need uh, to avail of those services, that will open in September of 2024. Um, we have two, two full-time counselors on campus, um, so you can book appointments with them to discuss any sort of uh, mental health um, things that you may want to talk about. Uh, we also have our Ferris Hodgett Library, so it's a part of Memorial's larger library system, um, just on a smaller scale. Um, and the library is such a cool place to be. They just installed these really neat pods, so they're kind of like pods on an airplane. You can lie down, they're very comfy, um, and there's privacy in between them, so um, they're constantly booked out. They do game nights, they do... Um, free snacks, late hours during exams, all of those things. Then we also have our learning center. So uh, they provide tutoring services, uh, whether being individual or group um, to students for the common courses that students generally have trouble with, sciences, English, math, those sorts of things. Um, and what's great about these services is that they're all free of charge. So there is no additional costs associated with them to avail of these services. And we like to say all you have to do really is reach out for help and there will be someone there to help you. Um, so if you're ever studying with us and struggling, don't hesitate to reach out. Go ahead. Yeah, and I just kind of touched on most of this, but uh, get involved. There's always different. We offer an ambassador program, so you can work to promote the campus. Um, there's a lot of employment on campus as well. So, for example, we hire students as tour guides. If you're living in residence, you can work as an RA and sort of be in charge of your floor. Um, our, our library hires countless amounts of students to work as library assistants. You could potentially work with your professors as a research assistant. And if you're thinking about maybe going to grad school down the road, those sorts of jobs look really great on a, on a grad school application. Go ahead there. Student exchange. So we have exchange partnerships with hundreds of universities around the world. Um, and we encourage our students to go on an exchange. It's a wonderful experience. Our students come back. They've been in Hawaii or Alaska, Greenland, all over Europe, um, the US, Australia, Tan Tasmania, New Zealand. So the opportunities are endless. Um, generally for student exchange, what happens is once you're once you complete your first year, you can apply to go on an exchange. Um, you can kind of let us know what sort of area you're interested in, and we can find a program similar to, um, we could find a program at another university that's similar that that would make you able to go there. And so you wouldn't like get set behind in your degree, for example. You can go ahead. You can just go ahead there. So um, we do offer on-campus accommodations. So this building here is our newest residence building. It opened about five, six years ago, I guess. Um, what's great about living at Grenfell is every single student gets their own private bedroom. Um, so at the end of the day, you can go in, close your bedroom door and have your own privacy. Um, you do have to share a washroom with just one other student. Um, you share a washroom and a full size fridge. So if you want to just go ahead to the next slide there. So you can kind of sort of see um, the layout. So you sort of walk in through a main door. There's a full size fridge, a washroom, and then uh, two other doors that would enter you into your own private residence. Um, our costs for residents range from about 3,400 to about 4,000. We also offer chalet style apartments. So they're almost like um, your own apartment right on campus. So you get your own private bedroom, um, you have three roommates and you guys share all the common living areas. 
Uh, we do offer a first year housing guarantee as long as you apply by the March 1st deadline. And I can't stress how important it is to apply by that deadline if you want to live on campus. Um, like many areas across Canada and around the world, uh, Cornerbrook is facing a bit of a housing crunch and it is quite difficult to find an affordable apartment within the city. Um, generally, like if you do the math on, on $3,400 between September and the end of April, um, you'll see that it is quite affordable um, in that regards. Oh, one thing I should mention as well, all each floor of our residence is equipped with very large uh, common rooms uh, with lots of different stoves, microwaves, fridges, um, so you can cook your own food in our residence. Um, you can purchase a meal plan if you would like, but it's not mandatory, it's optional. So we'll go ahead there. So, for general admission, uh, we're going to look at uh, five courses. So at the grade 12 level, or if you're an international student, um, a grade 12 equivalent, equivalent level. Um, so we're looking for you to have completed English, math, a lab science, a biology, chemistry, or physics generally, um, a social science or a second language course. So these could be things like history, social studies, French, um, and then an elective. And, and the elective is basically your next highest uh, grade 12 mark. So for Canadian admissions, we require a 70% overall average in, um, in these courses uh, in order to gain admission. And if you're an international student who may have um, a specific requirements, you can always ask us um, at the end of the presentation and we would be happy to go over those with you. Um, if you are missing one of these courses, it is it, it is possible um, they could be waived. Um, so depending on what program you're going into and those sorts of things. So that's every we look at that on a case by case basis. Um, it is an overall average of a 70, so you don't need to have 70 percent in every single course. You could potentially have a 60 in math, but as long as it works out to an overall average uh, for Canada, you would be eligible. Um, these are general admission requirements only, so certain programs um, like fine arts and nursing, uh, we would require um, a higher average, nursing especially. The deadline to apply is March 1st. The application can be completed online. It would probably only take you about 10 or 15 minutes to complete. It's uh, pretty straightforward. We can go ahead. And that is pretty much it for my presentation, my formal presentation. Um, oh, I didn't think I must have missed a slide. It must have been one of those picture ones. Uh, one thing I didn't mention was our fees. Um, so our fees also range uh, depending on if you're a Canadian or an international student. Um, so for Canadian students, for tuition, you're looking at about a little over 6000 per year. Um, and then if you're an international student, um, you're looking at about 21000 per year. So up here on the screen now is our contact information. Um, and you can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube. Um, you can check out our YouTube channels for cool videos of campus. Um, we have some uh, campus to virtual campus tours on there. Um, if you're in the Western region at all or would ever like to come for a tour, um, we do tours Monday to Friday and we'd be happy to accommodate that. So you can just send us a, give us a call or email us at study at grenfell.mun.ca to arrange that. Okay, I will stop talking now, give my voice a little break, but I'd be happy to ask, uh, to answer any questions you may have. Thank you there, April. Um, we are about uh, close to the halfway mark uh, through our session now. Uh, we do have just close to uh, 20 minutes or so uh, for this specific session. However, we do 
now can go into the Q question and answer question, uh, session. Uh, and feel free to in to insert your question in the chat. I believe I saw a few questions, but they're not on the chat. I um, think they're in the Q and A. So okay. Um, no, so I don't uh, have the presentation on. So one second now. Oh, okay. No, I see I one. Um, I am an international student studying in Nova Scotia Community College. I want to do the applied geomatics graduate program next year. I also want to do it part time. Is that possible? Uh, so really, I really only deal with undergraduate um, programs and degrees, um, but I can respond with our email for grad studies who can help assist you with your questions. I'm not sure if it's I think you can do it part time. Um, but they would, but they would know for sure. It's one of our newer programs. Okay, I think I responded to you there. It's just grad studies at grunfull.mun.ca. I, I don't see any other questions there right now, but oh, oh wait, maybe. To have. Oh, okay, we do have a question uh, from Sarah. In terms of applying for the Bachelor of Fine Arts, would it be required to have a grade 12 science credit? I have enough credits to graduate in terms of science. Just wasn't sure if this would be able to be waived. If you are, are you a Newfoundland student, Sarah? So it really, <laughs> our admission requirements often vary from province to province. Um, yeah, you're from Nova Scotia. Yeah, so we can waive the grade 12 science um, as long as you have the grade 12 math. We can't waive both. So just make sure you have either grade 12 science or grade 12 math. Here, Feel free to <clears throat> continue um, to insert your uh, questions either in the chat or in the Q and A panel. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I do have a question uh, for you, April. Uh, what's the difference between a St. John's campus degree and a Grenfell campus degree? Um, you when you graduate. No matter what campus you're graduating from, you're graduating with a Memorial University degree. Um, so your diploma will say Memorial University, Bachelor of Science or whatever. Um, I guess the difference, I guess, is just the experience at between the different campuses. Like I mentioned earlier, Grenfell campus is only about 1400 students, so it's relatively small. St. John's campus has probably about 15,000 now, I would say, around that area. Um, so like you'll see more programming, um, in St. John's, um, but like I said, we're smaller. Um, yeah, but at the end of the day, you're still graduating with a Memorial University degree. Thank you there for that. Uh, I do have a follow up question regarding the, uh, the graduate programs that you had. Uh, answered previously. Uh, I know that this just a reminder that this is a specifically an undergraduate session. So if possible, uh, try to keep the questions re related to undergraduate. But the follow up is, do you have sessions for graduate programs? But I think. I'm not quite sure, I guess. Um, do you know the answer to, to that? I know like Grenfell offers some like in person programming at fairs, but I don't think they do anything virtual. But if you send an email to grad studies, our, our graduate officer will help you. They're fantastic. So they can provide any any information you might need. Yeah, so uh, April had put the email on the QA. And I will copy and paste that and put it in the chat. Feel free to uh, follow up with the um, with the email. 
Uh, I can follow up to that and provide you with the phone number as well. Uh, just stay in touch. Uh, the next question I have there for you, April, what types of financial aid avail are available and how can students apply for scholarship grants or work study opportunities? Okay, great question. So again, this is going to vary a little different whether you're a Canadian um, student or you're an international student. Um, so um, anyone, any student really who applies to Memorial University by March 1st will be considered for our enter entrance scholarships. So as long as you apply by March 1st deadline, you will be considered based on your academic grades. Um, this, the, the amounts range um, in value. So some of the top level Canadian ones are about 6,000. And I believe that's the same for the international, correct, Satra? Yes. Um, so, and there's a wide range. Um, so those are just our sort of like general entrance scholarships. When you apply, you'll be considered for those. There are a number of scholarships that you can apply for as well. So if you go to the MUN scholarships uh, website, there's a whole bunch that you can apply for. And some may require you have to submit an essay or talk a little bit about your volunteer work, those sorts of things. So different requirements. I know some in Cornerbrook, um, we offer scholarships um, to, um, if your parent or grandparent had worked at um, the Cornerbrook Pulp and Paper Mill. So you can apply for a scholarship for that. Um, we offer a scholarship to the student in visual arts who enters uh, first year with the best portfolio. So many, many different um, scholarship opportunities. Um, unfortunately, we don't offer any full scholarships or any guaranteed scholarships. Um, but yeah, if you, if you wanna take a look at the website uh, for all the information. And I feel like there was a second part to your question. Yeah, no problem. Uh, for grants you have covered, uh, work opportunities, perhaps you can, I know you mentioned <clears throat> on the presentation that you students are available or can participate uh, and apply to work on campus. Perhaps you can, uh, are there any opportunities for them to uh, work off campus or what types of work that they can apply to uh, uh, on campus? Yeah, so lots of different opportunities to work both on and off campus. So I mentioned some uh, a little earlier, maybe if you weren't all with me, like you can work in the library, you can work at research assistance with professors. Our office is actually running a culture program. So we've hired on an international student as a full time coordinator of that program. Um, and he's got a suite of volunteers. And what they do is they go out into um, the community, the, they visit the local high schools, often elementary schools, and talk to uh, little kids about the importance of inclusion and diversity. So that's, uh, that's one of our unique programs. It's really great. Um, and off campus, our students are working everywhere. Um, could be working at uh, restaurants, in the mall, um, the grocery stores, the opportunities are really endless. So we, along with a little bit of a housing crunch, we've also been facing a little bit of a workers crunch. Um, and a lot of our international students have been helping fill that void actually. So it's been uh, great to see. And of course they're getting work experience within Canada and uh, they're getting money to help fund their education, which is great. Uh, thank you there, April. Uh, for those who have just uh, joined us, we are just going over a few questions and answer uh, session for the grant fall. Uh, so feel free to uh, pop in any questions you might have on the chat or in the QA function. Um, the next following question that I have, I know uh, you've touched briefly or uh, somewhat um, uh, excessively, extensively on the on campus residents. Uh, can you perhaps uh, tell us a little bit more about the off campus uh, situation at Grenfell or at the Corner Brook? Um, 
just I know that we do have a, a housing a crisis right now. And what are the options for students uh, to live off campus if they don't really particularly uh, want to live on campus, vice versa? It's very, very hard to find an affordable um, apartment off campus right now. Um, a two bedroom basement apartments, one bedrooms are sometimes going for a thousand twelve hundred dollars a month, which is quite expensive. Um, if you're a student, um, if you would really like to live off campus, um, I'd encourage you to start looking early. So maybe in the spring at the end of April, we have some students who may be moving out, moving back home. They might be finished their degree. That may be a good time to look for an apartment. Um, but if you leave it like late summer, your your chances of finding something are very, very unlikely. Um, and we also like to encourage, especially first year students to live on campus to get that experience as well. Um, so you get you'll really get to hang out and meet all uh, students from all over the world. Uh, you'll build sort of your friendships and relationships and then may, and then maybe in second year you and a couple buddies could find something to rent so that's an option as well but if you really want to live off campus you need to start looking early thank you for that april um the next question uh, i know that you've also uh covered uh this briefly as well uh, especially for uh, the, the between both campuses, but how can a student transfer between campuses and uh, what's the process when it comes to that? It's not really transferring as such because like you don't need to reapply to if you were studying at Grenfell and for one year and then the next year you wanted to go to St. John's, you don't need to reapply unless you're applying to a competitive school like engineering or nursing, those sorts of things. For general admission programs like arts, science, you can simply just register for courses at the other campus. Um, it is important when you're doing that though, to consult with an academic advisor. So for example, Grenfell's business program, um, so St. John's offers commerce. So sometimes a lot of students within the Cornbrook region may fully intend to do commerce, but just want to stay home for that one year. So it's important just to consult with an advisor to make sure you are doing the right courses and it's not going to like put you behind or make you have to do additional courses that you weren't really expecting. Um, with some programs, it's fairly easy. A few years ago, we had an English student. Um, he would always, he was from St. John's. He would do the fall semester in St. John's and would come out almost every winter to go skiing. So certain programs, it's easy to sort of transfer in between. Others, not so much if you're offered a seat um, for nursing, for example, in Corner Brook. Um, it's you can't easily transfer to the St. John's campus because all of the seats are filled. So someone would actually need to like withdraw from the St. John's campus and a seat become available in order for you to be able to take that seat. Great, thank you for that. And for the uh, study abroad uh, opportunities, I think that that's really uh, uh, a fascinating opportunity for students to take advantage of uh, when they are completing their programs and and go to Harlow campus campus uh, to to do the study abroad. But uh, do the students need to complete certain courses or any point during their their studies in order for them to complete or to do a study abroad experience or exchange program? So Harlow, not so much because the Harlow program is really built into the theater and visual arts programs. Um, so yeah um but for exchange yeah again like you should consult with an advisor and stuff if you are planning on doing exchange see what courses you're thinking about doing at the other institution and then seeing if they compare to our um courses um but yeah speak with an academic advisor again certain programs if you were a nursing student you probably likely wouldn't go on an exchange um, but other students, there's more flexibility to do so.
Perfect. Thank you for that, April. Uh, it looks like we do have uh, a few minutes left for our presentation. I do, don't think uh, we have any additional questions on the chat. Uh, feel free to uh, include it uh, if you do have any questions uh, over the next few uh, minutes. Uh, if not, then we can follow up. I will include the email uh, for Grenfell uh, for you to follow up uh, and connect uh, with the Grenfell campus uh, should you have any further questions uh, with regards to the presentation that we covered today. Uh, but apart from that, I would like to give the April to uh, just uh, to give a, a, uh, your last thoughts uh, on information that uh, you feel future students should know about admissions, preparation for their life at the university. Maybe the last few minutes for our session. Sure. Um, so first off, I would like, I'd like to thank you for joining Satria and I tonight for this session. Um, great questions. Um, uh, it sounds like there's some interest there in Grenfell campus. Uh, the application is live now, so you can go ahead and complete the application. Like I said earlier, it only takes about 10 or 15 minutes to complete. If you have any specific questions about uh, our admission requirements, if maybe you're from a different country and are, and are unsure of some things, uh, feel free to email me after the session. Satria just put our email there, study at Um, Feel free to email me if you have any questions at all, and uh, I'd be happy to assist you. Thank you, uh, April, and thank you all so much for joining us tonight to bring insight into admission uh, for uh, the Grenfell campus uh, for our attendees. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, again, feel free to email us at study at grenfell.mon.ca and we can follow up with you um, um, shortly after. Check out the sessions that are being offered over the next two nights of the virtual open house. Each night we start with a student panel and a variety of sessions that covers all our academic units. Sessions information can be found on the virtual open house webpage, and I will put that on the chat as well. Uh, and lastly, oh, we do have another question. Uh, we have a student here asking about the spring 2024. How long and when will it take to get admission? I guess what's the process on the processing times when it comes to admission process to uh, for the undergraduate studies? Um, well, really, we like to say the onus is really on the student. So if you submitted an application seven weeks ago, and you haven't received a decision, please email me after with your full name and student number so I can look into it. But I'm thinking maybe we're missing maybe a document on your application, and that's why a decision hasn't been made. Um, generally, within a couple weeks, um, we try to make our decisions. Of course, there are peak times throughout the year when applications are busier, and it could take a little bit longer than that. But seven weeks, I'm I'm thinking we may be missing something from your application. But if you, like I said, please email me after when I'm in the office in the morning, I can look up your specific application and uh, let you know what it is we may be missing. All right, thank you again. Uh, and for those of you who have just joined, uh, we are concluding this session. Uh, if you do have outstanding uh, question, I'm going to put the uh, email again on the chat uh, for you to follow up uh, with your inquiries and email us uh, when you can, and we will certainly follow up uh, after the session. But apart from that, thank you so much once again, April, for your time uh, and for doing the session tonight. And thank you for everyone else to uh, for joining us tonight as well. Uh, have a wonderful evening and see you tomorrow.